Welcome to the Catholic Sphere. Each week we have a different host and a different focus as we tackle topics important to Catholics around the globe. I'm your host this week, Father Joseph Mary. Today we'll be discussing once again religious communities devoted to adoration of the Most Blessed Sacrament. Mother Marie André is a poor Clare of perpetual adoration and is the abbess of Our Lady of Solitude Monastery, joining us from Phoenix, Arizona. My confrere, Father Miguel Marie, is a Franciscan missionary of the Eternal Word and serves at the Shrine of the Most Blessed Sacrament in Hansville, Alabama. And Sister Guadalupe of the Divine Master is a perpetual adoration sister of the Blessed Sacrament, joining us from Mater Ecclesiae Monastery in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Now we know that our U.S. bishops have begun this wonderful initiative of a Eucharistic revival. I'd like to ask you, why is that important for the United States of America? Mother Andre, why do you think that that is something key and important for the renewal of the faith in the United States? Can we possibly love and know Jesus enough? And so this could only be for the good I'm aware of the polls of, you know, Catholics and Christians that aren't, they don't believe in the Lord's true presence. And so anything can only be good, can be for the better of knowing the Lord. And I know there's a lot of people, faithful people out there that are working so hard to um, make the Lord known, uh, you know, catechesis and exhortation. I think it's important too to have a foundation of gratitude so that we know exactly who the Lord is and what he's done for us and how much he loves us. Uh, you know, in he says in the scripture, when the son of man comes back, will he find any faith? And of course he's talking about a second coming, but the sisters and I have talked about that. And in a way it's regretful on our part that he would have to even ask that but um, in discussing that, we want to, in our own lives, um, make sure that he is loved all the more and appreciated, you know, amongst the, the sisters and community, but also, uh, you know, making it known to the people around us. Uh, you know, I'd mentioned to you before, Father, um, in this past December, we had the 40 hours devotion. Our bishop mm -hmm. had written document on that. And um, so we wanted to be able to uh, extend that to the public to let them know that the Lord is present here. Uh, you know, he's in the desert. And I often think of the people, there's a freeway to the south of us driving back and forth. And I often wonder, do they know who is here on his Eucharistic throne? And of course, so we open the chapel to the public day and night. And of course, I also said that no matter who shows, um, as long as the sisters are there, you know, the 40 straight hours, which we were giving him thanks and praise for all that he's done for us. Father Miguel, you've been, um, you've been appointed uh, by the bishop to be involved in a unique way as a, a, one, one of the committees for the uh, Diocese of Birmingham Talk about that appointment and maybe some of the initiatives that are happening at the Shrine of the Most Blessed Sacrament. Yeah, I was invited uh, to be part of uh, one of the communities, uh, one of the committees of this Eucharistic revival in our diocese. Mine particularly is in the litur liturgy and worship. And uh, so part of our role is advising, uh, giving advice, uh, suggestion uh, and even helping with the preparation to execute the different events. And this year, so far, we have uh, two approved um, events that one will be the Dyson Corpus Christi procession, and then the other one is October 22nd uh, of this year, which is the feast of uh, St. John Paul II. Part of it is we have the uh, Eucharistic uh, Center there uh, in Hansville, uh, John Paul II Eucharistic Center. And so that will happen this year for sure. Uh, others are still kind of like being uh, considered, suggested, uh, and so forth. 
Sister Guadalupe, I know for the, when the PCPAs came here to the Irondale area, people became aware of Eucharistic adoration. They would come here for adoration. I'm sure that must be the uh, effect there of your presence there in South Dakota. Talk about the importance of a community like your own in adoration and how that can help in the revival of Eucharistic devotion. Well, Father, as a community, when we heard the, the, this revival that the bishops were preparing, we were overjoyed because we would like uh, many people know Jesus as we had the blessing to be in, for, in front of, the, of his Eucharistic presence daily. And we would like many people to share the same experience and to know that the, he is real. He's alive. He's ready to hear you, and he's with his open arms waiting for whoever wants to, to come to him. And the, 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 for us, was a surprise when we heard that here in the United States, even there are many Catholics who do not believe in the real presence of Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. That was uh, hard for us to hear that. But the, we hear that when we move from the old monastery to this new monastery, because there were many people who were overjoyed with this, because then they will have the opportunity to come and adore Jesus. Um, now that we have the opportunity to open the chapel to the public from 7 o'clock in the morning at the 6. Um, but either, that's exciting is because before, for a long time, uh, 16 years, we had been adoring Jesus um, instead of public. We had been adoring him in the basement because we didn't have a special chapel for him and no building for the sisters. But now that we have the building and we have a new chapel for Jesus, it's just something beautiful that we cannot express with our own words. How many people come visit him? And now that the priests are starting to talk about the Eucharistic present in the Blessed Sacrament, that he is real, just to see more people coming is something that I think, and all of us think that the, that will help this church here in this country to have more vocations, uh, to the priesthood or religious life. And it's wonderful because also will help the family to grow stronger. Now there is a lot of brokenness, but I think if if they continue to talk about the, the real present, it will help a lot. Now each of you has joined a community devoted to Eucharistic adoration. You've been in the community for a number of years. How has your love and appreciation, gratitude for the reality of the real presence grown in your years within your religious life? Mother Andre? Like any relationship um, with a loved one, and in this case with my heavenly spouse, um, you know, the Lord's love is unchanging and um, my love, I feel, you know, has uh, matured and, um, you know, going through in sickness and in health and in the good and the bad. And I realize the, the beauty of my life that the Lord is always faithful and committed. That was always important to me. I prayed to St. Joseph when I was 11 years old to marry the perfect man. And um, of course, he took me literally. And um, I wanted, even back then, I wanted somebody that I knew I could count on and would be with me. And um, that love has increased. Um, and of course, there's sorrows and joys. The Lord is always present. Um, you know, it, when I was younger, I might have had more um, romantic feelings. But then as you get older, uh, the you realize the love matures and you realize it is in the will, it's not in the feelings. And so when the Lord is calling and asking, um, you, he gives you the grace to say yes um, to him. 
uh, as and I look forward to continuing to grow old with him. He remains ever young, but um, and being with him, you know, in heaven. Father Miguel, how has your own devotion to the Blessed Sacrament grown or deepened over your years of religious life? You know, I um, I don't I honestly don't know if I I hope I'm growing. I hope it's deepened. The one thing that Mother said uh, about the Lord's fidelity, and I have to say, you know, I think the more I am in the community, um, you know, part, uh, witnessing to our Lord through presence, I do see more and more in a tangible way uh, His fidelity uh, mm -hmm. in providing, you know, me or even, even just simple as hearing my confession over and over again, He always offered that mercy. And uh, going to the Blessed Sacrament um, Chapel, whether in Hansville or wherever I go, that give me such uh, peace that He always accept us who we are. I think that's one thing that I, you know, mm. can respond. He's always there. He's always uh, ready to listen to us. Yeah. And we always find a refuge in His Eucharistic heart. That's right. That's right. It's like a place of default for me to go to the chapel, <laughs> yes. know, no matter what kind of, you know, sometimes it's very stressful situation or, you know, whatever the situation is. So I go to the chapel and by the time I get out, I'm renewed yes. and uh, be, uh, the peace come back, mm -hmm. you know. Sister Guadalupe, you talked about a lot of people experience brokenness today and how a devotion to the Blessed Sacrament can be a remedy for them. Uh, talk about maybe that experience you've seen in others, but also your own experience and growth over the years and your own devotion to the Blessed Sacrament. How has it been a blessing, a healing, in a way, in your own life? Well, uh, it's, Father, I just remember when I was, long time ago when I was younger, and I rem now that I, I adore and love Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, but it never been like that before. I remember when I was a teenager and I was uh, passing through a very dark time, and I see the situation that my family has passing through. My parents, they were like, um, they wanted to be separated. And in the way how my mom faced, faced those things, and she always was going to see Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. And, and also I remember very well that age when one of my brother passed away, she saw that with, with peace and took it with, I don't know, with something that I couldn't understand. And I asked her, why do you look so peaceful when there is a lot of painful things happening in our family, doing things like that? And it was very just, peaceful to hear my mom say, well, I learned everything from there. And I, and I say, well, there, but where? And she, she just showed me the, the most, the tabernacle where Jesus was reposed. And that, that age, it was for me to understand that Jesus was alive over, over there, that he was real. And one day, just out of curiosity, I just went to see him and I just say, Jesus, I don't know, you are God and you are in that small box. And it looks like you don't care about my situation, my problems, what is going on. It's like you don't know nothing. And I was just complaining about my situation. And I remember that I need to walk two hours from my house to the school. And I just pass five minutes in, the, in front of the Blessed Sacrament, and I always say, Jesus, I don't know if you are listening. I don't know if you are there, but I just want you to know that we will, we will lie, that you come and help pass, help my, help my family. And it was my prayer. And then, little by little, I start to, to feel peace that I couldn't experience before. But that happened just visiting Jesus five minutes 
after school, before school, and it helps me a lot to grow in, in, in that devotion. But in the beginning was hard to see that he was alive, he was that he was real, and he that he really cares about me. Yes, I couldn't yeah. believe that. Yeah. Yes, well, let's talk about some of the answered prayers. You know, I know, um, Sister Guadalupe, that you have on your website, and I'll talk to you in a bit, uh, some of the people who are giving testimony to different answered prayer. But Mother Andre, have you seen some of the fruits of your life of adoration in people receiving uh, what you've been asking for and praying for? Certainly we did with Mother Angelica in the years that we knew her, but uh, any stories that you could tell us? Of course, living with Mother, and, and I know the sisters in Hansel would be aware of this even more so, but in the time that I was living with her, you know, I witnessed her physical healing. I witnessed her trusting in God's providence. I witnessed many miracles at the network, so much so that they could almost become commonplace. And thinking back on it, I have to remind myself they were not commonplace, you know. Um, of course, for myself and the sisters out on foundation, you know, the Lord called us and um, we, we left, we, we didn't have much. And then, um, you know, where we are now used to be a, a land full of cactus and coyotes. And now the Lord has a Eucharistic throne here. The cactus and coyotes are still here, but um, there's a beautiful chapel and uh, the Lord provided a monastery for his nuns. And now, you know, people are coming out where there was nothing and to worship the Lord. And that to me is miraculous. Uh, he decides uh, where he's going to put you and he provides the resources and you want, he wants you to say yes and to be proactive and to move forward. And he always, he, he provides, you know, that was mother's life. She always relied on the Lord's providence. That's particular charism of our life. And um, when you're going through it, um, it's not that easy. When you look back on it and you see then what the Lord's accomplished and done, you're, and, oh yeah, the Lord, <laughs> he provides, you know. But each time is new and we have to keep trusting and providing and you know, it's a mir it is a miracle having the Lord present here and, um, you know, living with him is extraordinary, 24 hours, seven days a week. Yes, that's definitely something that Mother Angelica really imbued into us was trusting in his divine providence. You know, that sometimes things didn't always go right immediately, but you persevere in your trust and your hope in God. And he's going to come through in one way or another. He's going to bring good out of the situation. Father Miguel, so talk about your own experience. Do you know of people that have received uh, blessings there at the Shrine of the Blessed Sacrament or maybe something, a memory you have of Mother Angelica? The one, uh, the one that I wanted to um, share is the, um, I don't know what the Lord is doing whenever this happened. And sometimes I give a tour of the shrine uh, informally or some people whatever but sometimes uh, I see people when I bring them to the chapel they they were like really move and then they just start tearing up and that happened quite a bit and then also uh, we have this um, healing service at the shrine which is a very Eucharistic center and then when we bring, uh, part of it is we bring the Blessed Sacrament, the monstrance to each person, and we would just pause for a few seconds and then go to the next person all the way to the end. And some of these people, they are so moved. Um, again, I don't know what the Lord is doing, but uh, I can see by their bodily um, experience, tears, um, that the Lord was touching their uh, soul, their mind and heart. Uh, it's always it's always making me realize, you know, there's a lot of things I don't see, but the Lord is working today. Yes. You know, Mother Angelica wanted us to start those healing services when shortly after I was ordained. 
because she knows that we're all broken, we're all in need mm -hmm. of healing, and often it is an interior sort of thing, and acceptance of suffering. Sometimes we have seen physical healings as well. And so she looked at what they did at Lourdes, where they have a Eucharistic procession every day during the pilgrimage season, and there's always a blessing of the sick. And a number of the miracles that happened at Lourdes were with the blessing of the Blessed Sacrament. So Sister Guadalupe, I know that you have on your website, you have some videos of people talking about um, the power of prayer. So could you talk about that, the power of prayer and maybe some of the things that you've seen through your intercession? Yeah, Father, we have um, received a lot of good witnesses that they say is, well, many people say it's because of your prayers. We heal of these and physical or spiritual or emotional. But obviously we know that what we are doing is just prayer. The work is God, the one who is working in their lives. It's not our job, but our job is just to pray and to tell him these are the needs of the people. They need this or, or they need healing in this part, you know. And he's the one who answering those prayers. Mm, there are many examples we have received, but many I think we don't know. And, and I think we don't need to know them, but the good thing it is the people, they know that Jesus is present there. And that gave us a lot of great joy. And one uh, example that I would like to to just speak because I think it's not in the website that we have is the one lady who was, um, but, well, it was his son was killed in a in car accident. And the gentleman who was driving the car is um, wealthy and has a lot of money and, and he just, he say, well, just not to go to the prison. I just want to give a, you a lot of money. Tell me how much do you want or how much do you need? And I will be free of everything. And I remember the answer that the mom say, well, keep your money and, and keep your freedom. I don't think I don't need anything because my son, it was a gift from God and it has no price. And, and I asked her how did she did that? How was for her like uh, easy to, to forgive that gentleman? And she said, well, I had not done this for myself, but it was Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament who gave me the strength to face this situation differently. And I think the power of forgiveness coming from the Eucharistic present it means a lot. It makes me think about uh, how many people in our time, if only they can come and visit the Lord, they will have the, yes. the power of forgiving. Well, let's move on to the uh, challenges. Uh, Mother Maria Andre, do you have a particular challenge you'd like to give to our viewers today regarding the Blessed Sacrament? I would challenge um, each person to, uh, when they're in front of the Blessed Sacrament or even at Mass, to really, um, you know, abandon and surrender themselves and trust in what he's saying, that he is fully present in the Blessed Sacrament, that he hears us, he loves us, he cares about us. Uh, he's the same Lord that Our Lady gave birth to and walked in Palestine and he, um, you know, we can still have that kind of relationship with him that his contemporaries had with him, even though we can't see the corporeal extension of his presence in the sacred host. But I think of what St. Thomas Aquinas said that, you know, uh, faith is sufficient for that. And that um, if we continue to abandon that desire to the Lord um, to trust and be faithful that he is present, that he does love us, um, he'll, I think he may, he'll make himself more and more known to us. Father Miguel, what is your challenge? I 
think my challenge would be, I know we have viewers who are not Catholics as well. I would challenge them to look at John 6, just read the entire chapter of John 6, and ask why did most people who were following our Lord after that, they decide to leave? What was it that made them to leave? Very good. Sister Guadalupe, do you have a challenge for our viewers regarding the Blessed Sacrament? Yeah, my challenge is for the, to invite each one of them, whatever um, situation are passing through or they need to, to while well, they are doing a, a strong decision in their life, even their marriage or their vocation, whatever it is, just to go to the Blessed Sacrament and in the chapel that is close to you. But even if Jesus is in the tabernacle, don't be afraid like me a long time ago that he will not listen. He is there. He is real. He is alive. And he will listen to you. And he is always welcome you. Just go and, and talk with him. And, and maybe you will not feel anything, but you just keep going and keep going. And that way you will grow in faith and love in him. Wonderful. And uh, my challenge is to ask yourself the question, why are there people, men and women, who are devoted to the Blessed Sacrament and even devote their entire lives in adoration of the Blessed Sacrament? Perhaps there's something to it. And maybe you young men and women there who are considering vocations, maybe the Lord's calling you to give your life too to the Lord in a particular way to adoration of the Blessed Sacrament. So thank you three for being part of this show today. You've added so much to our understanding and hopefully our love of the Blessed Sacrament. And may Almighty God bless all of you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Thank you for joining us today. We'll see you next week here on The Catholic Sphere.